this is going to be an introductory video of explain how to do Punnett squares and how actually it relates to meiosis because a lot of times when you watch a lot of videos on just Punnett squares or even websites they don't really explain why we have those letters why that setup actually works so to give you an introductory um, explanation of what what how that works you have to go back into meiosis so if we were to look at meiosis I drew a bunch of cells here um, just to, to start and I'll add on to this uh, this cell right here is just your typical diploid cell so what that means is that you will have both sets of um, chromosomes so one big question here about what the diploid means is that these are your basic somatic cells so if you were to look at any cells of your body these are your somatic cells and that means that every cell inside of your body will contain both sets of chromosomes well why do we have both sets of chromosomes well because in order to make those cells you would have to have your mom and in order to get the other set you would have to have your dad so when your mom and dad came and made you uh, every cell inside of you will be diploid because you have one set um, of chromosomes from your dad one from your mom so what happens is that during meiosis there's two steps or stages of cell division. One of the most important steps of uh, meiosis is actually what they call crossing over, which is where those genes um, are, are, are mixed together. So if you were to look at the first stage of meiosis, uh, the first thing is that the, each of these chromosomes will duplicate itself and actually um, have the exact same copy. And when this happens, you're gonna have a couple of terms that you have to know. So each of these these individual ones are what they call your sister chromatids. So these ones are your sister chromatids and they call them sister because they're exactly the same. And the next one here is that well you have this green one and this red one. What those two are called are homologous chromosomes. What they mean that means is that they actually account for similar length in chromosomes which are basically your DNA base pairs and they share the, your similar traits. So if we were to look at this chromosome and if this section of the chromosome accounts for hair color such as this one is say brown and oh, this is really thick on for the mat marker this is brown hair color and if this same chromosome over here is for blonde you can see that both of these chromosomes are homologous chromosomes because both of them are accounting for hair color traits and what happens is that during meiosis the first step is that the homologous chromosomes will pair up they will duplicate to create your sister chromatids and then once that happens crossing over occurs so what crossing over means is that if we were to look at this mum sort of uh, chromosome it's actually going to go and crosses with the dad's chromosome something like this you might have seen diagrams like that and the result of this is that a section of this chromosome will be sort of mixed in with the other chromosome or switched so then as a result if i were to just move these back together if this section of the red one this is going to be moved into the green one and then the green one will be moved into the red one so what happens is that if this chromosome were to be brown initially brown hair color now it actually has the blonde gene on this chromosome and if this one were to start as the blonde hair color with the gene account for blonde hair, now it actually has the brown hair. So let me just kind of move this over. So then this is going to be my red one is over here. And then this is going to be my green one. Or, uh, oh, I didn't copy. want my green one onto the red one. So just to clarify, I'll write this stuff over here. Maybe I'll use a thinner marker so then it's not as... Uh, it's easier to see so initially this one was for brown hair so we can say brown as in capital B that's your genotype and then since now this red one has come onto this chromosome instead of being brown it will be blonde so it'll be lowercase b and then you notice that this red one is used to be it started off as blonde and then now it has this green section of chromosomes which we said that it was supposed to be, uh, supposed to be your brown so this is going to be brown and we have the uppercase b and then this red one can still continues to be blonde gene so be lowercase b so a couple of things from these is that um, we have the color which is the brown and blonde and we also have the uppercase 
and lowercase b. So the color, the physical features of this one, let me just kind of change color so it's easier to see. So the physical features, these are your phenotypes. So I, how I remember it, this is that the P stands or sort of starts at the same letter as phenotypes as physical features. So anything you can see, or not just what you see, but what you produce, those are your phenotypes. These letters are what we call the genes. So then they are actually called the genotypes. So then how do we relate all this stuff into um, Punnett squares? Well, I'm going to bypass a lot of couple stages of your meiosis, but if you study your meiosis steps, you know at the end of meiosis, you will have four different haploid cells, right? You have four different haploid cells. So you have four haploids. That means that they're one end, one end. And what that means is that after all this duplication crossing over, each of these chromosomes are going to separate and segregate into one of these four. So if we were to look at this one, well, what happens is that this first one is going to go into that one. So then let me see if I can do this one. So then let me see if I can just copy this one. So what happens is that the first one goes over here and then the next one is going to go over here. And then the next one is going to go to the third one. And then it's going to go over here. And then finally, the last one is going to go to the, oh, that one then cut copy. This one is going to go to the last one. So if you can follow with the letters, then you can actually see that, well, we have two different combinations for letters. So the first one, it's all green. We said that it's uppercase B. So this one is uppercase B. This one has a red one. So then this is lowercase because it counts for the blonde hair. Then the third one is the brown hair, so it still has the gene for brown hair. And the last one is still is your blonde hair. So basically the green section of over here, we can say that it's your brown hair. This red section is for blonde hair. Green section is brown hair. Red section is for your blonde hair. So if you look at this, well, how many combinations do you have of the different genotypes or the different letters? You have either big B or lowercase b. That's why when we set up our Punnett squares, we only have four boxes for a for one trait. So then you can see that right here, monohybrid one is where you just have your uppercase B and lowercase B. We can actually put the uppercase B and lowercase B here, but it's just redundant because you're doing exactly the same thing. So this is your first male, I guess, if you were to take one of these cells, this is your first genotype. So then what goes in here is your the other egg, the other sex cell, it's either your egg or the sperm for the fertilization. So if the first genotype contains this one, and if it fertilizes with another sex cells with the same genotype, which is a heterozygous, which is your uppercase and lowercase b, then you complete the, the Punnett square to get your probability. So this is an introductory video of relating Punnett squares to meiosis because a lot of times, again, a lot of people don't really um, understand where these letters are coming from, but it actually just kind of comes from your meiosis because a meiosis is actually a really important step to create the biodiversity of all of our organisms due to this crossing over step and then as a result, you get four haploid cells with two maximum combinations um, of your, your trait. And so that's your, your video. Hopefully this helps. And if you want to know more about how to do the Punnett squares, watch the next video. Okay, thanks for watching.